In life, as in programming, there are many decisions to be made. And in this program, we're going to be focusing on how to deal with those decisions in programming. And we're going to look specifically at what if there are two options to a decision? What if I want to go one way or the other way? And what's going to fit perfectly in with that is the if-else statement. I have set up a real-life scenario in the conditional statement on the screen. And that is, if we were at a game and the referee was about to flip a coin, and we were playing football or something like that, and the coin returns ahead, our team would be receiving the ball. Otherwise, our team will kick the ball. If we get a tails or if the coin decides to stand up on its edge, we're going to kick the ball. The flowchart would look something like this for this conditional statement. And you'll see that the diamond shape is our conditional. And then depending on whether that's true or false, it's going to execute either the true code or the false code. And this is what it would look like if we put the scenario on the left into the flowchart on the right. Now you can imagine the team being that yellow ball at the top. And so it would go down to its decision depending on whether the referee flipped a heads or a tails. And if it was a heads, the team would receive the ball and then they would continue on with the game. But if we reset the scenario and the ref flips tails, the team is going to kick the ball to start. And then they would continue on with the game. So with this two-way decision, it's either going to go one way or it's the other way. Let's see how we would do this inside of a program. And so I've set up a program where I've said a virus has descended on your town. And you are going to enter how many particles of the virus you have been exposed to. And then we're going to take in that value as a variable called particles. Then we're going to start with our if statement, the first half of our two-way decision. And if you have been exposed to 10,000 or more particles, well, you've been exposed to the virus. So we're going to print out something like this. You now have the virus. I hope you enjoy the taste of brains. Otherwise, well, we know that they don't have the virus. So we're going to say system out print line. You are safe. Sleep with one eye open, gripping your pillow tight. Let's see how this program would run with some input. And we're going to input 10,000 to start with. So it should work with our first if statement. And so the program eventually gets to the if statement. This would be true because 10,000 is equal to 10,000. And so it would tell the user, you now have the virus. I hope you enjoy the taste of brains. If we were to change the input and say, oh, I've only been exposed to 9,999 particles. Well, this statement would be false. It would go to the else statement and print out, you are safe. Sleep with one eye open, gripping your pillow tight. So that's the basics of if else. But let's add something in addition to what we've just done. Let's say I also want to tell the user that they can't go home. So let's see what would happen if I input 10,000 into the program and add that one line of code saying you can't go home. Well, it would give us an error and it would say else without an if. And this might seem odd, but it comes down to the fact that indention does not mean anything for the compiler in Java. And if you do not have braces around the information inside of your if statement, it is only going to run one line. And so that one line, you now have the virus, I hope you enjoy the taste of brains, is associated with the if statement. The line below it, you can't go home, is not associated with it. So let's see how we would correct this issue. We would simply add braces around the code that corresponds with the if statement. Some people suggest this with no matter how many lines of code that you have, if it's just one or two. But I want to show you that if someone just has one line of code beneath, that is the only line associated with the if statement. If there is more than one line of code, you must have braces. Otherwise, only the first line is associated with that if statement. So now if we were to run the program, it would work just as we would suspect. It would say, you now have the virus. I hope you enjoy the taste of brains. You can't go home. Now in this next slide, I've made a subtle change. And hopefully you can see the change that I've made. And this is actually a common error with if-else statements. And the reason why it's an error is because I've added a condition to the else statement. The else statement will never require a conditional statement along with it. It is a catch-all. If the condition above is not true, in all other cases, it's going to do the else. 
you do not need to put a conditional along with it. Only if statements will have conditionals. So if else statements are based on conditional statements, which are going to evaluate to either true or false. If the if part of the if else statement is true, the program will run the code associated with the if. Otherwise, in all other cases, it will run the code associated with the else. If there is more than one line of code associated with an if else statement, you must use braces around it. As I said earlier, some people say that you need to use it with all if and else statements just for readability. But you might run into some code where people have simply not done this. And so you need to be aware, if they have not done this, that it's only going to run one line of code beneath there. And then lastly, beware of common mistakes like adding a condition to the else statement. It's tempting to do because our brains think logically that way. If this isn't going to be true, well, this is going to be the condition that I want to run the else with. But it's just not necessary, and on top of that, it's going to cause an error. So just be aware, it's important to just have the word else with no condition associated with it. If else statements are a powerful tool in Java that allow us to make two-way decisions. Either it's going to do this or the program's going to do that. If you write them correctly and follow the rules, they will go a long way in opening up many ways to control a program. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do click like below. If you like this type of video, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.